so now we are going to learn about bootstrap confidence intervals and first of all we will cover the non parametric case for the population mean so we will be looking at confidence interval for, for the population mean then we will also look at for the difference of the two means and the ratio of the two variances okay likewise we will also see for the parametric case so first of all let us begin with your confidence interval for population mean in case of non parametric case so here we do not know that the sample is coming from which distribution we do not have enough any idea about the population from which the sample has been taken so let us first of all import the necessary libraries so we will be importing numpy and we will also be importing matplotlib because we will be making different graphs and plots pyplot as plt so now suppose we give us take a sample data and for this we use np dot array so we are going to create an array for this data set so suppose the values are 23 28 32 37 44 49 so these are just some random chosen numbers you can change these and work accordingly so basically here we have created an array of your sample data next let us specify how many bootstrap samples do you need suppose we need 10000 bootstrap samples so it will set the number of bootstraps to 10000 this is the number of times the resampling process will be repeated now let us also specify the resamples number of resamples let it be whatever is the length of this data that we have over here so you can see you have 10 observations so here what it will do is here we are specifying n underscore resamples as the length of this data okay so it will set the number of resamples in each bootstrap sample to the length of the original data array so it will be taking 10000 samples from here and each will be of size 10 because here also you have this 10 observations can 3 3 four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 now let us initialize an array to store initialize an array to store the resampled means okay so for this let us write bootstrap underscore means as np dot zeros n so what we are doing over here this step over here basically initializes an array of zeros and what will be the length of that array it will be of size 10000 this will store the mean of each resampled data set so initially we have an array of zeros only okay and it will keep on getting updated every time a bootstrap sample is taken now let us perform bootstrap resampling so we will initiate a for loop for i in range this okay so this for loop will iterate 10000 times because n over here is 10000 and for each bootstrap sample we are going to generate a random sample with replacement so we will write resample is equal to np dot random dot choice because we are doing resampling with replacement so data and it will be of size what we have defined over here and resamples and we are writing replace is equal to true so what it does is it will randomly select these many size of the sample points from the original data set that you have over here and it will be done with replacement 
So some point, data points can be chosen multiple times. So from here itself, the data is this, right? We have whatever we have taken, this is the sample data. And from here, 10,000 samples will be taken and each time it will be of length 10. And obviously we know that it will be with replacement. So there can be some data points that can be repeated in a given sample. So probably you can think of it in the way that 23 might appear twice or maybe 28 appears three times. Now you will calculate the mean of the resample data. So for this, we will write bootstrap underscore means. This will be np dot mean of the resample. Okay. So it will calculate the mean of the resample data that we have obtained here and it will be stored in this array. We have initially, uh, so basically this is initialized as zeros. So here basically you can see that you have uh, an array of zeros and now it is getting updated every time the bootstrap mean is calculated. Okay. Now what we will do? We will sort these bootstrap means in ascending order because we need to find the confidence interval. So we need to arrange them in an ascending order. So we can write sorted underscore means as np dot sort. So here we are using this function from numpy libraries bootstrap underscore sam sorry means. So here, if this step would sort the bootstrap means in ascending order and this will be now used for calculating the confidence intervals. How you will calculate the confidence interval is suppose if you want to find out the 95% confidence interval. So we need the lower and the upper bound. So lower bound would be sorted means that you have defined above. And here we will be taking the integer value 0 0.025 times n. So what we are doing over here? We basically want 95% confidence interval. So it means 1 minus alpha is 0 0.95, alpha is 0 0.05. Now when we are considering two-sided interval, it means that if you consider the lower bound, it would be the, the area to the right of it would be alpha by 2. So it will be 0 0.025. So when we write 0 0.025 of n, so it will calculate 2.5 percent of this of 10,000, right? Because we have arranged it in ascending order from bottom, it will look at it will go to the point below which 2.5 percent of the bootstrap sample means fall. So it will provide the lower limit for where the true population mean might lie with 95% confidence. And here if you see why we have written this integer, basically we want the value at the index that represents a 2.5 fifth percentile in the sorted bootstrap means. Right? So we want the integer part. So this will convert this function over here, this integer function over here converts the number to an integer which is basically necessary because your array indices must be integers. Likewise, you can have the upper bound. So what will happen here? So the lower bound will be 0 0.025 and this one would be 0 0.975 because 97.5% of the points would be below this from the upper bound. So alpha by 2 is above that, right, to the right of it and 1 minus alpha by 2 would be below that. So basically it means that it would be 0.975 of n. So 97.5% of n would be and its integer part will be taken and it will be stored in your upper bound. So you have obtained the bounds. Now we can print the confidence interval. So print 
that 95% confidence interval for population mean. So we need the lower bound. So you can use this lower bound. So first it will evaluate whatever is the value obtained and stored in lower bound, lower bound. And we will specify the format over here. That is we are going to consider up to two decimal places only. Likewise, it will also print the upper bound. Okay, so let us run this. Sorry, here it should be. Oh, sorry, this is wrong bracket is missing over here. Yeah, so 95% confidence interval for population mean. You will have the lower bound comes out as. 37.30 and the upper bound comes as 58.50. So you see that even when you were unaware that your sample is coming from which data, which distribution, you do not have any, any idea about that, still you are able to find out the 95% confidence interval for the population mean. Now suppose you want to plot the histogram for this so that Visually, you can see what is happening over here. Plot the histogram. So, we have used it earlier also, right? So, we can just simply write the commands plot.hist. We want to plot these sorted means. And suppose you want 50 bins, and the color can be blue. and your transparency level we are fixing it as 0.6 you can label the x axis and likewise you can label your y axis also so on the y axis we can write frequency And the title of this could be Bootstrap Distribution of Population Mean. Now, suppose you want to make a vertical line at the lower and the upper bounds you want also want to display these bounds that you have obtained so for that we will use plot dot a x v line okay so it will basically draw a vertical line and where do we want that we want it at lower bound we can specify the color of that line color can be red line style can be a dashed line so we can write this and we can give it a label as lower bound likewise you can draw a vertical line again at your upper bound so maybe we can change the color over here so that you can distinguish and oh sorry upper bound yes so this is how it looks so you also have the overall means because for each bootstrap sample you calculated the mean and you have plotted the means over here this is the histogram of the sorted means 
and here you can see your lower bound and upper bounds are also visible which basically covers 95 percent of your data set over here so you can say that so 95 percent confident that your population mean would fall between 37.30 to 58.50 So this was the bootstrap confidence interval for population mean. Likewise, you can have two different populations and you might be interested in the difference of the two population means. Okay. So we will be now writing the code for confidence interval for difference of two population means. So if you can recall, we have done a similar thing when we were drawing the samples from normal population. So here we are not assuming any distribution. And we are just trying to find out what will be the confidence interval in those cases. So again, we will be importing NumPy as NP. Although you have already imported it, I am rewriting it so that you know from where to start whenever you are writing any code. Matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. Okay, so. We know the functions of these two, right? So NumPy is used for basically your arrays and matrices, and it can perform various mathematical functions also on these arrays. And matplotlib library is used for plotting the functions, right? So you, since here you have made this histogram, so matplotlib was used here. So after this, let us write what is the sample data for the two groups. So let me write for group 1 np dot array. So I can use the same one for first data set, first population and I can simply rewrite this. And for the other group, group 2 can be. Suppose it is 18. 25, 30, 40, 45, 50, 57, 62, 67, 72. Okay. So, obviously, here I am just considering these of size 10 only. If you want to increase it, but you can do that and check your results. So these basically group 1 and group 2, these are your NumPy arrays containing sample data for the two different groups. After this, we would again specify the number of bootstrap samples that will be taken. So let that be uh, 10,000 and the number of resamples, this would be same as the length of the data set. So group 1, even for if you write for group 1, that will be same for group 2 also. Now we are going to initialize an array as we have done earlier. So here you would see the similarity between the first code that we have written for single population mean and here we are writing for the two population means. So everywhere we have to be dealing with two groups, right? So here we have stored this data in two different variables. Likewise, we would be generating samples also again for uh, two times. So let us initialize this. So bootstrap underscore differences would be storing np dot zeros okay so here it will initialize an array of zeros next for Performing bootstrap resampling for the differences, we will initiate a for loop for i in range n. Okay, so this will iterate 10,000 times, and for 
each resampling process what it will do it will generate random sample with replacement for both the groups so suppose for the first one let me write resample one so np dot random dot choice okay so here we can write for the first group and size would be again what is your n resamples over here that is size 10 and replace is equal to true means that we are going to be doing sampling with replacement likewise we can define for your second sample also so here it will be resample 2 you will have group 2 okay so here you are basically redrawing the random samples with replacement from these two sample data sets okay and the size of each sample would be 10 only now we would also calculate the mean for each of these so mean would be mean 1 basically for this we will calculate numpy's so we will use numpy's mean function so resample one and likewise you can obtain for the second one also resample two now you can find out the difference between these two means right so sample mean one minus sample mean two so you would write bootstrap So mean 1 minus mean 2. So the means of these resample data sets which we have obtained over here, their corresponding differences will be taken for each bootstrap sample and it will be stored in this array that we have initialized. Okay. Once you have obtained this array, finally we are going to sort it out. Sorted differences will be np.sort and bootstrap differences right. let me just again you will find the lower and the upper bound so i will just use it from here we need the print command also so lower bound will be so here we have stored it in sorted differences so let me write differences again differences okay so we have found out 95 percent confidence interval so at alpha by 2 and 1 minus alpha by 2 so this first one covers 2.5 percent of the total number of samples and here it would be 97.5 so it is basically the point below which 2.5 percent of the boot sample means bootstrap sample means fall and this one would be 90, the point below which 97.5 percent of the bootstrap sample means would fall then obviously we will give these commands so here it will be for difference of population means So you can see that it starts from minus 14 the lower bound is minus 14 and here it is 16 upper bound is 16. Now if you want to visualize it using the histogram we can use that. So let us reuse this one. So let me just write the command over here itself. So here it will be sorted differences. So bins and color we can keep same. So bootstrap differences. Frequency is there. Bootstrap difference. Bootstrap distribution of difference of population means. Again rest of the things can remain the same. Yeah. 
that you can see that these are the histograms of the difference of the two means. This is your lower bound which is denoted by red line and here you have the upper bound which is green. Okay, So, minus 14 to 16.5, so 95 percent over here you can see that your population mean basic, we are 95 percent confident that the difference of the population mean in this case would fall between these two endpoints, which is also evident from the histogram itself because you can see that 95 percent is covered only this outside region that you have that accounts for 5 percent overall, so it would be 2.5 percent on each side, okay, because it is almost symmetric in this case. So, we are done with the bootstrap confidence interval for population mean and for difference of population means. Likewise, you can write for variance also. So, here I will be writing the code for the ratio of the two population variance. Obviously, you can write for the single population also. So, let me just mention confidence interval for ratio of two population variances. Again, we have seen this when we were dealing with the normal distribution. So, so, we have seen earlier also that if you have two normal populations and from there you draw the random samples. So, how you can find the confidence interval for the ratio of the two population variances. So, here also we are going to do the same thing. The major difference over here is that we do not assume that the two populations are normally distributed. So, we will be importing NumPy as in p and we will also import your matplotlib as plt. So, sample data. So, we can take the same data set that we have obtained over here. So, I see most of the things here would remain same. So, we can just use that. So, sample data is same. Again, we would be taking 10,000 sam bootstrap samples and size of each sample here we will be considering as same as the size of the first group, length of the first group, which is basically 10. We have, we will also be initializing an array. So, here we would use bootstrap dot ratios. So, this is an array of zeros and the length of that array would be same as 10,000. Now, you can perform your bootstrap sampling for ratios. So, as you know, we will be initiating a for loop for i in range this 10,000. For each bootstrap sample, we are going to take a sample. So, resample with replacement. So, np dot random dot choice. So, here first argument would be the group that you have then size would be the same as this one resample and resamples that you have written over here and then you will write replace true which basically means that we will be doing sampling with the replacement likewise we can write for the second sample also so resample two and here we will be writing this so for the second group also you have generated random samples. Now, you have to calculate the variances. Okay, so the first in the previous one we calculated the means. So, variance 1 would be the sample variance np.var for the first sample, resample 1 and dd of is 1 which basically means we are working with the sample variance. Likewise, we can write for the second one it would be np where the second one d to f is equal to 1 again. Now, we can calculate the ratio and store it. So, maybe we can write here only bootstrap so variance 1 divided by variance 2. 
once you have obtained this you have obtained an array of this bootstrap ratios we can sort them in ascending order sorted ratios would be you obtained using this np.sort function and for here we will just use this bootstrap okay then again you can find the lower and the upper bound so lower bound would be sorted underscore ratios here and again we will be considering the integer part of this 0 0.025 0 0.025 that is 2.5 of n 2.5 percent of n okay likewise you can write the upper bound also So here it would be 0.975. So again, we are finding 97% conf 95% confidence interval. Sorry. We can now print and write the code for the histogram. So that basically is same. So we can just reuse it from here. So here it would be for ratio of population variance. So you can find that the lower bound is 0.35 that is s1 square over s2 square so ratio of two population variance it means that we are 95 percent confident that sigma 1 square over sigma 2 square would fall between these two endpoints okay. we can again find the histogram we can make the um, histogram over here so for that we would just use the same command so here it will be row sorted ratios okay because we have stored the bootstrap ratios arranged in ascending order in this again here it would be bootstrap ratios bootstrap distribution of ratio of two pop ratio of population variances The rest of the things would remain the same so you can see that variance ratio of two population variance is there and so it is skewed right skewed so if you can recall in your uh, normal distribution case also it is skewed because there we have your chi square distribution starts from zero to infinity and it is right skewed so here also sample variances if you are considering even when you do not know the original population still you can find out the 95 percent confidence interval and you can see that from these lines red and green which is the lower and the upper bound it can be seen how 95 percent is lying between this these two endpoints so this is how you can find out the confidence interval if you are working with population means or you are working with population variances or, or the ratio of the two variances or any other statistic in which you are interested.